Let me share my screen. Um, desktop. Okay. All right, so this is the assignment right here. All right, so I'm gonna just go ahead and start typing. Let's see, so we'll call this, uh, doesn't look like I have an assignment four here yet, so, or an assignment five. Okay, so let's see. It's uh, several GMU students have decided to start their own cloud company, blah, 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 okay. So we need a customer, the customer must track the customer's name, phone number, email address, and if the customer has a corporate discount. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. We're gonna make a customer class and we're gonna do the init self and we have name, phone, email, discount. Okay, and there's some information about the discount. Each customer will only select a single VM. Okay, so we know that a customer is also gonna have a VM. I think I talked about that before. So we'll just put in another argument here for VM, okay? So we'll do self.name equals name, self.phone equals phone, self.email equals email, self.discount equals discount. Okay, I should probably should put the uh, chat up here so I can see. Okay. I'll close this. Okay. Um, all right. And then self.vm equals vm for now. We'll fix that in a little bit. Okay. And then we know that each customer will only select a single vm. Okay. So let's create a class for the vm. F all right, now let's see. All VMs have a flat monthly rate of $20, which includes eight gigs of memory and 20 gigs of storage. Okay, so that's basically all we know about a basic VM, all right? So there isn't really any arguments to pass, right? The temptation might be to say, oh, okay, well, I'm gonna pass in like the memory and the storage, except that these aren't variables. They're fixed at eight gigabytes and 20 gigabytes. So there's no reason to do that. So, um, so I think we're just gonna do this. We'll do self dot memory equals uh, eight and self dot storage equals 20 and uh, a flat monthly rate of $20. Okay, maybe we'll store, yeah, actually instead of storing that, let's, um, I think we say in here that The VM class should have a method called compute cost. Okay, so cost. All right, and we just told you what it is. So all this is gonna do is just return 20. Okay, there's nothing particularly interesting about this base VM class, okay? Because it's just all these numbers are kind of like statically fixed numbers. So there's, there's no variation here. Okay, where the problem gets interesting is when we start dealing with the subclasses. Okay, so, all right. So now we're gonna go ahead and create the web server. We'll do class web server, all right. And this one, all right. Now the web server is gonna have additional memory. And then there's a rate per eight gigabytes. Okay, and it says that they can choose up to an additional 120 gigs of memory but for this assignment, we don't actually have to check that, okay? So that actually simplifies it greatly. We don't have to put in all, all kinds of logic to make sure that they don't try and initialize a web server with more than that, okay? So all we basically need is we'll do an add RAM or something, add memory, like this, okay? And so then we'll do self dot additional memory equals add memory and, uh, Okay, and so now, um, oh, well, we also need to, um, because we have now overridden the constructor, right? We created our own constructor. We need to make a call to this guy. So we need to go to the super dot underscore init like this, okay? 
That way our web server also has the base eight gigs of RAM and the 20 gigs of storage. Okay, and so then we're gonna go ahead and we will do a, uh, what is it, compute cost. Okay, and so for this guy, it is just gonna be $10 per eight gigabyte increments, but that's in addition to the $20 flat rate, okay? So basically all we can do is we can just do this. We can return super dot compute cost plus, and then it would be uh, whatever the additional memory is, self dot additional memory divided by eight, because for each eight gig in increments, it costs $10, okay? So there we go. There's our cost function for the web server. Okay. Um, for the file server, uh, we have, let's see, we have block storage or object storage. We'll call that storage type. And then we have storage media media type okay so we'll say media type ssd or magnetic okay and same deal we'll call this guy the super class constructor and then we need some additional so we'll have storage type equals storage type and these are just going to be strings i guess media type equals media type okay and all right, now we need a cost function for this. Okay, so for this guy, it is, if it's SS, so if the storage media, so if the media type is SSD, then it's $5 per terabyte per month, okay? And if it's magnetic, it's $2, okay? So we can just do return super dot, cost. Oh, actually, we're going to need an if statement here, aren't we? So let's not get ahead of ourselves. So we'll say if self dot media type is SSD, then we're going to actually let's let's create some temporary variables here. We'll say temp equals super dot compute cost. Okay. And so then if it's uh, SSD, then we're going to say temp equals temp plus and it is going to be, oh, I need the actual amount of RAM. I didn't include that, did I? Okay. The maximum amount of store, or sorry, not RAM, but storage. Okay. So they also need an amount here. Uh, additional storage. Okay. So self.add storage equals add storage. Okay, and so now we're going to do temp plus, and it'll be add storage times, and it's uh, for SSDs, it's $5 per terabyte per month. So it'd be just times five. Okay. Um, otherwise, else temp equals temp plus. Got a indention problem here. There we go. Okay. Um, add storage times two. And it's not add storage, it's going to be self dot add storage, self dot add storage. And then I need to spell media type correct. Okay. So there is our compute cost function for that guy. Okay. And all right, let's go ahead and do the Bitcoin one next. Class Bitcoin miner. Oh, you know what? I'm not making these subclasses, am I? Somebody should have told me that. Okay, so I need to, in order to do that, I need to put the VM in here like this. Okay, getting a little bit sloppy. All right, there we go. Uh, I'm gonna copy of this right here so I don't have to retype all this stuff. Okay. 
All right, so my Bitcoin miner, let's see. I have the number and brand of GPUs, okay? So we'll have number and brand. Okay, and we will do self dot number equals number, self dot brand equals brand. Okay, and then for this guy's cost function, it's going to be if self dot brand equals um, NVIDIA. So if it's NVIDIA, then there's a $15 monthly fee. So temp equals temp plus 15. And there's also the GPUs cost $10 per month for however many there are, okay? So to be plus number times 10, okay? Whereas if it's the AMD kind, then all you pay is the number times 10. You don't have to pay the $15 fee, okay? And so for all of these, I should be returning values here. Okay, return. Okay, so I think that is most of what I need. Okay, so let's see, it says each, oh, I need to put in straw methods. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'll start with, um, I'll start with the VM. Okay, so let's see, we have def straw self. All right, so in this case, we, uh, let's do this. Let's return, um, I'll just put VM in parentheses and plus self dot, mem I guess I need to do straw self dot memory plus gigabytes RAM comma, plus stro self dot storage HD for hard drive. Okay, so that's a good string function for a basic VM. Okay, for a web server, uh, we're going to do, um, All right, so for this one, I think what we'll do is we will do, um, I suppose I could call the super class. Yeah, maybe what we'll do, maybe what we'll do is not put in this word VM right here. Maybe we'll just do this mess with this for a little bit. Okay, so I think here what we'll do is we'll say web server plus, um, and now we'll make a call to the super class like that. Okay, so we're gonna call the super class a string function to get the eight gigs of RAM and the whatever gigs of storage. Okay, and then we'll say, uh, Original RAM plus string self dot additional memory. Okay, so there's a string for that guy. And then for the file server, all right, we got a bunch of stuff we need to account for here. So let's go ahead and copy this, stick it here. Okay, so this guy is a file server. So we'll just put in file server here. We're gonna still call the super class, but now instead of additional RAM, we have storage type. Um, we don't really need the string function here because, oh, you know, it looks like I've got a typo up here. I need to have this with a close parens, okay. All right, now let's see, storage type, uh, this is gonna be storage type plus comma media type plus self dot media type plus 
add storage plus self dot add storage and I believe that's in terabytes so terabytes okay all right so there's our file server and then the last one is the Bitcoin miner so let me copy all this again down here and here's Bitcoin we have the super class and now we have and and um gpus string self dot number okay and that's basically all we need there okay um all right so i think that pretty well let me see what else we need in here uh each of the subclasses should override compute cost we did that already the customer okay the customer class needs to have a method called compute monthly bill okay so let's go ahead and stick that in so back up here in the customer class all the way up here at the top monthly bill oh we need to put in a string function for our customer too okay so we'll need to remember to do that Okay, so for this guy, basically all we have to do is we have a VM right here, so we can get the cost of that VM, and then we just have to decide whether or not they get a discount. Okay, so basically we'll do this if self dot discount. So if they get the discount, if that's true, then it's going to be um, return self dot VM dot compute cost. Okay, so that's the cost of whatever VM they have. Okay, times, and because they get the discount, it's 20% off, that means they only pay 80% of the total. So just be times 0 0.8. If they don't get the discount, then we just self.vm.compute cost. Okay, so that's basically all you need for the monthly bill. Okay, and let's go ahead and stick in a string function. Self, all right, so we'll return self dot name plus self dot phone plus self dot email plus out string self dot discount plus and now we can actually just print out the VM we'll do uh VM plus string self dot VM because our VMs all have string functions. So when we do stru self dot VM, it'll just recall whichever kind of VM that they have there. Okay. So that's probably pretty good enough for that. All right. So let's go ahead and see whether or not we've made any mistakes by creating some example code. Okay. Did I, did I get everything? Other than all these test cases, did I did I forget anything? I think that's pretty much all of it. Don't you have to make like an is instance for the VM? Oh, did I say that you had to do that? Let's see. Ah, yes. Make sure that the constructor for the customer class checks to make sure that the pass. Yes. Okay. Good catch. Thank you. So let me go back up here to the top. And so right here, if is instance uh vm comma vm then we go ahead and set this pretty soon we're going to learn about exception handling so we can actually throw an exception and ca cause the program to stop running but since we haven't learned that now we'll just print a message uh, vm argument must be a vm object okay all right so there we go all right did i miss anything else I guess the first thing I had to do is make sure I don't have any typos or syntax errors. So let me pull up another window. Python three, assignment five. 
Okay, so I've already got a problem there in line 69. Anybody know what the problem is, by the way? Yeah, it should be double equals, okay. All right. Oh, good, okay. So now it didn't complain about any kind of syntax problems. Hey, that's not bad, actually. Okay, so now let's go ahead and try and create some things, all right? So we'll do C1, actually we'll do V1 equals, we'll, we'll start with a basic VM, then we'll do C1 equals customer, then we have name, comes after name, phone number, email, discount, and VM. Okay, so phone number we'll do uh, 703-555-1234, Bob at bob.com. Uh, we will say this guy does not get the discount, false, and his VM will be V1. Okay. And so then let's just go ahead and print C1. All right, let's see. Let's actually make sure that this works. Okay, so we see we've got Bob, the discount is false. And so we see that, oh, look, we haven't actually printed out the cost anywhere. Okay. We need to do that. So over here in the string method of our customer, let's go ahead and right here at the end, total bill plus string self dot compute monthly bill. Okay. So now we're now we're gonna just go ahead and compute that bill on the fly. All right. So now that we've done that, when we run it, we see, okay, the total bill was 20 bucks, which is exactly what we expected because a base VM with no customizations costs $20, okay? And this guy doesn't get the discount. So now let's modify it and say, all right, well, suppose that instead we'll do C2, actually, I'll just copy this. So this is, we'll call this guy Bob2. And in this case, we'll say it's the same VM, but in this case, he does get the discount. All right, so we'll see if our lar logic there is correct. And uh, we'll go ahead and print him out. Okay, and we see that, sure enough, the first dude only pay, or pays the full $20, but the second dude, because he gets the discount, pays $16. So he, you know, he gets 20% off, okay? All right, and so I'm not gonna go through and create all these test cases, because that's quite frankly, just sort of annoying. So let's go ahead and, which one do you want me to do? Anybody have a favorite you want me to try? File server, web server, Bitcoin miner. Okay, I'll, I'll just do the file server. Nobody cares, that's okay. Right, let me see, the arguments for file server are storage type, media type, and add storage. Okay, so let's see. The storage type is either block or object, and then SSD or magnetic. Okay, so go with uh, block, SSD, and we'll do 100 terabytes. Okay, and then we'll do, um, let's create another customer here. Bob three. Uh, we will give this guy the discount and we will give him the file server v2, okay? And so then we'll print c3. And, oh, I've got a problem, okay? So I've made an error in my code somewhere, all right? So it doesn't like the fact that I'm trying to concatenate something that's an int to my string, okay? And it's probably this self.add storage because that's actually a number. 
Okay, so I need to go back in here and look, it tells me exactly where the problem is. It's on line 59 or line uh, 19. Okay, it looks like it's actually line 59. So I'll go ahead and go over here to line 59. Okay, there, here's the problem right here. So in, in my add storage, I need to put this in an STR. Okay. Let's see if that fixes that problem. All right, now we see that we've got Bob three with all of his information. And now for the VM, we see that in this case, cause it's a file server. Now we're getting file servers string methods. So we see file server. It's still got the eight gigs of RAM and the 20 gigs of storage. It's block storage, SSD, additional storage is 100, and 100 terabytes. Now it's saying that the total bill is $416, okay? So let's let's actually do the math. Is that correct? So for SSD right here, SSD is $5 per terabyte per month. Okay? So that should be $500. Okay? And then $500 plus the $20 for the base price is $520. Okay, and oops. And then what is our total bill is 416. So is 80% of 520, 416? I don't actually know. Let's see. Uh, here's my calculator 520 times 0 0.8 is 416. Great. Okay, so it looks like the math checks out. Okay. So at any rate, that's essentially how you do the assignment. Obviously, you'd have to go do all of the, you know, various other test cases and stuff. But the thing to point out, and the, and the most interesting thing about this is here in the customer class, okay, this customer has this VM instance, okay? This VM can be the base class VM or it can be the subclass, any subclasses of VM, okay? So this VM could be a VM object, it could be a file server, it could be a web server, it could be a Bitcoin miner. All of those are valid instances because of what we learned about with regards to inheritance, okay? Is that this VM can be any of those things, all right? And this code will still work correctly, okay? So that's, I guess, sort of like the key, the whole point of the entire assignment is um, sort of that recognition, okay? And the idea that this VM could be any of those things, okay? So that later on when I'm down here at the bottom, okay, for this argument right here, okay, I can pass in either the base class, an instance of the base class, or I could pass in an instance of a subclass like, like I did right here for V2, okay? And if there was a subclass of file server or a subclass of Bitcoin miner, I could use any of those too. So any descendants of that base class would be acceptable to use here, okay? So that's basically the assignment. I got through it in just about half an hour, um, sort of talking my way through it. So does anybody have any questions or comments about what I just went over? That's a beautiful code. Uh, mine is over 160 lines. Yeah, you probably put in a whole bunch of comments. Mine doesn't have any comments and I didn't put in all the test cases. So, all right, I see two question marks. Um, I don't know what that means. Assignment was too tough for me. Um, yeah, I mean, well, um please please be lenient i don't grade the uh, the assignments that's maddie you're gonna need to talk to her okay but yeah i mean this is basically what it is i i didn't intend it to be um really all that difficult um i think one of the key things is as i've said before you just you kind of have to practice right you have to get uh, sort of familiar with creating these classes and subclasses and assigning attributes and stuff right that's why i'm able to go through it so quickly is because i've had hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of hours of practice, right? So I've, so that's why, you know, 
for an assignment like this that takes me half an hour to do, I give you guys a week to do, right? Because I don't expect you to be at the same level as a, a college professor, but you know, it's why I give you a week to do it so that you can work your way through these things. Okay, so at any rate, that is that, okay? Now, this lesson is, this week's lesson is about polymorphism, okay? And spoiler alert, we actually already did polymorphism right here in this assignment, okay? So polymorphism is actually, the lecture is gonna be super, super short, and then I'm gonna go over um, this week's lab and assignment, okay? Our polymorphism is, let me exit out of this and create a new, excuse me, a new file. So I'll call this, let's see, lecture. Is it, are we really only on lecture 10? That doesn't sound right. I don't have a lecture 10 file, so we'll just do lecture 10. Okay. Um, all right, so suppose that I have a class called fish, okay? And in my fish class, I'm going to define a method called swim, okay? And all this actually, I'm not gonna call it swim, I'm gonna call it move, okay? And in here, all I'm gonna do is just print out the fish is swimming, all right? Now I'm going to create another class called bird, and it's also going to have a method called move. Print the bird is flying, okay? And now I'm going to have another method call or another object called car. And I'm and it's going to have a function called move. And oh, by the way, I should be putting in self here. I need to do this correctly. All right, print car is driving. Okay. All right, so these are all classes. None of them are necessarily related to each other. They're all different. Nothing is a subclass of anything else, but you will all see that they have one thing in common. They all have a method that is has the same name and accepts the same arguments, okay? In this case, there really aren't any arguments, but okay. And so why is this interesting, okay? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and create some objects. So I'll do F1 equals fish. Uh, F2 equals fish, uh, we'll do B1 equals bird, B, and then we'll do C1 equals car, okay? So I've got two fishes, a bird, and a car, all right? Now I'm going to go ahead and stick all of these into a list. So we'll just do list of stuff equals this, all right? And then I'll do list of stuff dot append F1. And let's go ahead and do F2, B1, and C1, okay? All right, so now I have this list of objects and the objects are of all sort of weird, different random types, okay? Now the thing about polymorphism is I can do this. I can loop through my list. So I can do for I in list of stuff, okay? And I can do I dot move, okay? And the reason why that works is because every single one of these objects has a move method, okay? So in other words, Python is smart enough to figure out to say, okay, as I'm looping through this list, the first item in my list is a fish that has a move method. So I'll go ahead and do it. The second item has a move method, so I'm going to do it, okay? So it's just going to go through and um, execute all these, oops, um, execute all of this code. So if I were to run this, Python 3, lecture 10.py, okay? You see that it does exactly what we expect. The fish is swimming, the fish is swimming, the bird is flying, the car is driving, okay? Likewise, if I wanted to, I can make a method that accepts um, a list of objects or just an object 
and uh, executes move on it. So I could do this, def uh, do the moving, okay? And this is going to accept an object. And then all it's gonna do is call object.move, okay? And so as long as I pass in an object that actually has a move method, this should work fine. So in other words, I could change this from i.move to, uh, let me, I'm gonna move this below here. So instead of i.move, I will just call do the moving and then I'll pass in i like that, okay? So again, there's nothing really earth shattering about any of this, okay? And you see that you get the same result, okay? So in summary, and yeah, spoilers, guess what? That's all there is with polymorphism, okay? All that means is that as long as you have objects that have the same function names with the same arguments, Python is smart enough to figure out that, oh yeah, as I'm looping through things, I can go ahead and uh, execute that method. That's it, okay? If we go back to the assignment that we just looked at, okay, assignment five, there's actually already some polymorphic stuff in here, okay? One of them is this compute cost function, okay? All of our different VMs have compute cost, okay? See how they all have compute cost? They all have that method called compute cost, okay? So I could, down here at the end, I could, uh, I could create a list of VMs, right? So I've already got V1 and V2. Let me do V3 equals uh, web server. And let's see, I don't even remember what web server takes. It takes, additional amount of memory, that's it, okay. So web server, uh, we'll say this has an additional 16, okay. So now I could create a list, my list of different VMs. So I'll do V1, V2, V3, okay. And just like I just showed you, okay, I could do for I in my list, Okay, uh, we'll do uh, print string i dot compute cost. Okay. All right, so this is polymorphism because i each time through the list is gonna be set to a different type of object. The first time through it's a basic VM object. The next time through it's a file server object and the last time through it's a web server object. But in all cases, they have this compute cost method, okay? And so somebody said in the comments, technically speaking, this should work for the string method too, right? Yes, absolutely. The string method is yet another example of polymorphism, okay? Because the string method, same, same exact deal, okay? So instead of doing print compute cost, another polymorphic thing that I could do is I could just do print stro i, okay? And then I'm just printing out, I'm implicitly calling the string method of whatever this particular object is. And I have string methods defined for all of them, okay? So we should be able to see if we run this, okay, see how we have here is our first, uh, this is our first VM right here. It, it printed out the cost and then it called the string function. Then it printed out the cost and then the string function and then the cost and then the string function, okay? So yeah, so absolutely. So the STR is another example of polymorphism, okay? And so I hate to say it, but that's all there is to it, okay? There's, it doesn't get any more complicated than that, all right? So with that, let's actually look at the lab really quick, okay? Let me pull that up. Let me, I'm gonna stop the share for just a second while I go find that. Elixir. Labs. 
All right. There's the lab. And let's see, where's the assignment? Oh, yeah, the assignment's actually going to take a little bit of explaining. Okay. All right. So let's see. All right. So we'll start with the lab. Um, let me turn my screen sharing back on. Share. Okay, there we go. Let me reinfect my chat window. Okay, um, so, all right, so here's the lab. Okay, so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna create three classes, football player, basketball player, baseball player. We're gonna create a base class called player, but it's just a boring class that doesn't actually do anything, okay? And then each of the three classes is gonna have a method called play, and all it does is print out a message, okay? Which is exactly what I just showed you. <laughs> Okay, it's literally, I mean, the only thing that's different is like the names, but it's essentially exactly the same as this kind of deal right here. But instead of fish, bird, and car, we have football player, basketball player, and baseball player. Okay, and instead of move, we have a play method. Okay, all right. And then we're going to write Python code to create an empty list. We're gonna create some objects. We're gonna stick them in the list. Uh, spoilers, that's exactly what I did right here. Okay, and then we're going to loop through the list and, okay, now I added in one little wrinkle, only call the play method if the item in the list is a player or a player derived object. Okay, and that's, be oh, actually I skipped ahead, sorry. So we're gonna create the list, we're gonna add the things to the list, then we're gonna loop through the players and call the play method, okay? So, so far, this is exactly what I just showed you guys, okay? Then we're gonna create another class poker player that's not a subclass of player. We're also gonna give it a play method, okay? We're gonna add those poker player methods to the list. And now the only wrinkle that I added is you're gonna loop through that list and only call the play method if the item in the list is a player or a player derived object. So there's just gonna be a check for is instance, okay? And it even says, you will need to use is instance, is instance of, I don't think it's is instance of, I probably should fix that. It's is instance to make this determination, okay? You will see that this list should print out the exact same thing as your other loop since poker player is not a subclass of player, no poker player message should be printed, okay? And then um, we'll create another loop that'll just loop through everything. So this will be the same loop actually that you write right here, okay? And then you're gonna create a, another class called non-player that does not have a play method. And we're going to show what happens when you try and pass a method that doesn't have the play method into a loop or a function that's expecting the play method. And I tell you right here, it actually generates an error message. And then the program stops running. Okay. So that's it. That's the lab. Okay. All you should have to do in order to get this lab done is review what I just went over <laughs> in this lecture and essentially do pretty much the same thing. This lab should not take any time at all, okay? If it's taking longer than, you know, an hour, then something is really, really wrong, okay? And you should immediately schedule a um, appointment with either me or Maddie so we can get you caught up, okay? Because this, this shouldn't be difficult, all right? Um, all right, so that's the lab. All right, now the assignment is a little bit different. Okay, the assignment is gonna be weird because this time we're not printing things out. We're actually gonna draw pictures, okay? And so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna create a bunch of classes, okay? We're gonna create a generic shape class. Then we're gonna create subclasses, circle, square, and line, okay? Everything's gonna be public. We don't need to worry about private variables or UML diagrams or any of that stuff. Okay, so the shape class is just going to have a color. That's all it has, nothing else. Okay, the circle class has an X and Y, which is 
its position, right? So if you think back to your algebra, right? Your, the X, Y coordinate of the center of the circle. Okay, so it's gonna have an attribute X, an attribute Y, and then it's gonna have a radius, okay? And then it's, of course, it's gonna inherit color from the shape class, all right? The square class is gonna have an X and Y, which represents the center of the square and then a length of the side, right? So if the square, you know, was at uh, 50 comma 50 and had a side length of 20, then you'd have a 20 by 20 square centered at 50 comma 50, okay? Um, and of course that also has color. And then we're gonna have a line class, which actually has four attributes, X1, Y1, and X2, Y2, which just represent the coordinates of both the starting point and the ending point of the line, okay? And so the circle, square, and line classes are all gonna have a draw method. So here's the polymorphism, okay? And this draw method, it's gonna accept an argument of a canvas object, okay? And so this is where I wanna pause for a second okay and just say that up until this point all right everything that i've talked about in this lab all this stuff right here is just standard basic python okay nothing different okay with this canvas object okay now we're using we're going to be using a new library okay and it's called tkinter okay see this library right here tkinter i don't know if you guys use that in 109 or not but Basically what tkinter is, is it's a library that allows you to create uh, user interfaces. So, so like graphical user interfaces. So you can create text boxes and buttons and all this kind of stuff. And one of the different things that they have in there is this canvas object. And a canvas actually allows you to draw graphics. Okay, so it allows you to draw lines and circles and squares and arcs and all kinds of stuff like that, points, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to basically take this draw method, draw method that we're going to write. It's going to take the arguments from the constructor here, this like x, y, and radius, and then it's going to call the appropriate method of the canvas object, which are all defined down here, and it's going to translate the information here into what the method down here needs in order to actually literally draw like pixels on your screen. Okay, and so um, so I'm going to give you a I want to show you a quick demonstration of that. Okay, um, but I'll show you that like this canvas object has a create oval method. Okay, and it's a little bit weird because this create oval method doesn't accept like a center point and a radius. It, it accepts four points: an x1, y1, x2, y2, and then a fill. So so for the color. Okay, but the X1, Y1, and the X2, Y2, if you think of a box, okay? So, right, if I think of a, a rectangle, okay? The X1, Y1 is the position in the top left-hand side of the box. And the X2, Y2 would be the bottom right-hand corner of the box, okay? So if you can imagine in your head two points, X1, Y1, and X2, Y2, and then you draw those into a box, okay? The create oval method then fits an oval into that rectangle specified by those two coordinates or those four coordinates, I guess, the X1, Y1 and the X2, Y2, okay? Well, that's inconvenient because we're keeping track in our circle class of the center point, so not corners of a thing, we're keeping track of the center point and then a radius, okay? So what I've done is I've given you the formula right here to calculate the X1, Y1, X2, Y2s that you need in order to be able to actually call this create oval correctly, okay? And then I've done the same thing with the rectangle and the same thing with create line, okay? And so create line, actually, you don't need to do any kind of conversions, okay? So basically all that's gonna happen is your draw method is going to do some calculations and then it's gonna call the appropriate object. So the draw method for the circle class is going to do these calculations and then it's gonna call create oval. The draw method for the square class 
is going to do these calculations and then call create rectangle. And the draw method for the line class is going to do no calculations. It's just going to call this create line method. Okay. And so once again, we're beating polymorphism to death with a, I am very confused about this assignment, need a reference example. Okay, well, hold on, I'm getting to it. I'm not done explaining it yet. Okay, so we're beating polymorphism to death. Okay, like it's a, I mean, basically the polymorphism in this assignment is we're creating this draw method for every single one of our classes. So the circle class is going to have a draw method. The square class is going to have a draw method. And the line class is going to have a draw method. OK? All right. Now, I've given you a bunch of starter code. OK? So let me show you what the starter code looks like. Um, let's see. OK, so see how there's this assignment six starter code dot py, all right? So I'm going to, I'm going to copy it over here. Copy downloads assignment six starter code dot py to here. And I'm going to rename this just assignment six.py because that name is too long. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at what's in here. All right. This is all code that I'm just giving you. Okay. So it says from tkinter import star. So this is the tkinter libraries. And then I have this window equals canvas equals canvas.pag. And then I have this. Okay. And then there's some comments in here that tell you what you're supposed to do. Okay. Before we get to those comments, all right, what I want to do is I want to actually show you what happens when you run this. Okay, so I'm not going to add anything to this code right now. I'm going to just run it as is. Okay, so when I run it, look, it popped up a window. Okay, and there's nothing in the window. It's just kind of a window, but I can drag the window around. I can minimize it. Max. I can close it. All right, well, a window is kind of boring. That's not very interesting. So let's go ahead and add something to the window, okay? So if I go back to my assignment, all right, I point out that there are these great functions here, like create oval, okay? So let's go ahead and just randomly throw some numbers into create oval and watch what happens, all right? So I am going to, there's create oval. Okay, now this is a method of the canvas object. Okay, so I've got a canvas object right here. So I'm going to do canvas.createOval. All right, and let's just do uh, 20, 25, 45, 60, 70, 60, and then it's saying fill equals color. So I'm going to do fill equals, and I'm just going to make this purple. Okay, all right, so that's all I've done. Okay, now I'm going to save this. Oops. I'm going to save this. All right. And when I run it, ooh, look at what happened. Okay. It created this little oval right here. Okay. And it made it purple. All right. So now what it did is if I go back to my code here, okay. The 2025, all right, 20 comma 25 is the X and Y coordinate of this, the top. Here, you know what? Let me make this uh, oval a lot bigger. I think this will be easier to explain. Okay, so I'll make this 450 and 460. Okay, so let me, let me rerun this and I think this will be easier to visualize. Okay, so now I have this giant oval, okay? All right, so what this statement means, the 2025, 20, if you imagine a box that fits right around this circle, okay? Exactly, you know, the circle just barely fits inside the box, okay? 
then what happens is, is 20 comma 25 is the coordinate right up here where my mouse cursor is. I hope you guys can see that over the zoom. Okay, this is the point of the top left-hand corner of that box, 20 comma 25. All right, and 450 comma 460 is the point down here, which is the lower right-hand corner of the box that would surround this oval, okay? So this is how you draw circles and ovals in T. Kinter, is you basically give a point of the top part of a box and the point of a lower part of the box, and then it draws a circle that would just fit exactly inside of that box, okay? So, and then of course the color is whatever color you tell it to make, okay? The problem is, is, as I said before, is that our circle class isn't saving points of boxes. It's saving a center point, okay, and a radius, okay? Circles usually have a center point and a radius. So what I've done is I've given you the calculations right here in create that you need in order to convert what's in the circle class, so the x, y, and radius, into these values to use for create oval. Okay, now, create oval is just for circles. Okay, there's also a create rectangle and this works very similarly. Okay, if I were to do 20, 25, 450, excuse me, 460, bill equals red. Okay, then you will see that this is gonna create a rectangle that completely overlaps and covers up this oval that I just made. Okay. Um, I need to kill this guy. So if I run it again, you'll see that now I can't even see my circle because I just drew a giant red square, red rectangle over top of it. Okay. But at any rate, the point of the assignment is you're going to create these classes. Each of these classes is going to have a draw method. And all the draw method is going to do is do some calculations and then call the appropriate canvas functions, whether it's create oval, create rectangle, or create line. Okay. All right. So that's basically what it is. Now, I added in one little wrinkle just because, just to be annoying, which is there is another class, there is another file right here called shapes.txt, all right? And basically what you're going to do is you're going to read in this file and then create all the appropriate shapes, okay? So for example, in this case, the very first item is a circle and it's in its center point is it x equals 199, y equals 236, and its radius is 20, and its color is brown. So you would draw a circle like this, I'll show you exactly what that looks like. Okay, so that would be equivalent to me doing this. Okay, but now I can't just pass in 199, 236. I have to go back and do the math that's listed right here, right? I have to do this math to figure out what the X1, Y1, X2 and Y2 are that create oval is going to be. So I would take the X value, which is whatever that was, 196, the Y value 200 and something, and the radius 20, and I'd plug it into these formulas to get these values, which I then pass in to create oval. Okay. So this is what I recommend you do. It's eight o'clock, so we're out of time. We're going to have plenty of time to talk about this next class on Thursday. Okay. Go try it out. Okay. Please do not wait until the last second to do it. Go try it out. Try practice drawing some stuff like I just showed you, okay? I think that if you actually do it and try it, then I think you will, it will make more sense, okay? Will you please go over this again in next class? I just said I was going to go over it in next class, okay? So yes, I will, all right? Please go try this. Okay, do what I just did right here where I downloaded the starter code and then did some canvas.create kinds of things. 
play around with the numbers. Change the numbers to different values. Try what happens if you put in zero, zero, okay? All right, change the different colors if you want. I think if you mess around with it for a little bit, you'll be able to figure out what's going on, okay? And then you'll be able to come to class on Thursday with the correct questions to ask in order to get this done. Now, I'm going to tell you, this is not actually a difficult assignment. It's not that much code. Um, it, it really isn't, okay? But I would like to underscore, if you don't try it at all, and you just come to class on Thursday and hope that I'm going to just tell you how to do it, I probably won't, okay? So come try this stuff out. Come with your questions on Thursday, and we'll talk about it further, okay? We're two minutes over. Does anybody have any questions before uh, we sign off for the night? No questions, no comments. Okay, then I will say everybody on Thursday.